This episode brought to you by the Black Tux. Premium rental suits and tuxedos delivered. Remember it so you don't have to. Well, what the hell is this? Why are the nipples on the outside of me? Ooh, hot entrance critic. Have I ever let you know that my interest in you isn't purely professional, or do I need skin tight vinyl and a whip? Tamara, you're a freaking professional! Why are you suddenly acting so weirdly horny? I'm just representing how an out-of-touch gay man thinks that straight women act. <laughs> Malcolm, why are you suddenly a white guy? And a very annoying one at that! I'll tell you right after I finish mugging for the camera. <laughs> stop it! Stop it! All of you! Who's responsible for all this? He is! Hello, critic. It's your old friend, Joe. <gasps> The Mocker. Nostalgia Critics has gotten too dark for some viewers, hun. I'm here to make it more kid-friendly, colorful, and nippleicious. You won't get away with this, Mocker! I know you don't like it, but I was just doing what the studio demanded. Yeah, but... I apologize. I'm just trying to do something more colorful for the kids. Oh, you don't need to apologize. Now, I understand you're frustrated, but why don't we sit down and talk about it over some herbal tea? Okay, that does sound really nice. No! I won't let the fact that you're a decent human being get in front of the fact that you make horrible crap! It's Earl Grey. Oh, I love Earl Grey. That's like my favorite. No! I need someone who won't fall for your kindness. I need a geek. An angry geek. A last angry geek! Last? Really? Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of angry geeks. Millions. Okay, I don't know why he calls himself that either, but I'm calling it! <laughs> Judge me. I very much am. <laughs> All right, mocker. It's time we. It's time we put an end to your insanity. Now, don't be that way. Why don't I order us some lattes and we can sit down and discuss artistic styles and interpretations? He is very nice. Gosh, Isn't so he? He is nice. just the nicest nice. guy. I just want to eat him. But it won't work! We did an entire riff track on how your style ruined Batman Forever. You did? Yes, and it's still available. For anyone to purchase! The cameos by Mike Nelson, Kevin Murphy, and Bill Corbett. Good times are just a back click away. Ha! Well, that was recorded years ago. You couldn't possibly find any fault in Batman Forever now. Why? Yeah. I don't know. I just needed a segue into the review. Yeah, there's like a million jokes about this movie. Yeah, we should probably just get to it. Batman Forever. After the 1989 smash hit Batman, producers were excited to see if the follow-up, Batman Returns, would deliver as big a financial punch. The film didn't quite deliver what the studio wanted, with many parents complaining it was too dark for children. This resulted in child-friendly merchandise being pulled, most notably McDonald's Happy Meal toys. Not wanting to go through that again, the studio pushed director Tim Burton into a producing role and handed control over to Joel Schumacher. He agreed to make the third installment, Batman Forever, more lighthearted and marketable, and it seemed to pay off as it made more money than the previous installment. Schumacher is best known for his following epic, Ice Puns and Ass, but a lot of people ignore what a cluster of goofiness Batman Forever is, seemingly giving it a pass. We're here to see if that pass is warranted, or if it deserves to be tossed in the Snyder pile. Pile of what? You know what. Let's take a look at this batshit insanity with Batman Forever. After being assaulted by the big names in this movie, interpret that as you will, we see Batman, played this time by Val Kilmer, getting ready to ride a Batmobile so phallic that even H.R. Geiger's original design looked less penisy. And if you think they're not going to overcorrect the Happy Meal tie-in from the last film, take a look at this actual opening line. Can I persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir? I'll get drive through Well, can't act like they didn't set the bar low from the very start. 
It's such a weird line, clearly done just for a McDonald's ad. Can I persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir? I'll get drive through tomatoes, crisp lettuce, two cheeses on a superhero bun. It doesn't fit in the movie at all. The only way it could work is if it was literally followed by this. Can I persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir? I'll get drive through Two cheeseburgers, a large fries, and uh, I got a movie out, so just give me whatever plastic schlock with my face on it you got. Bingo. Batman drives to the second bank of Gotham in Chinatown? As a crime boss named Two-Face, played by Tommy Lee Jones instead of Billy D. Williams. Only the finest of art forms remedy this. You know I love the Italian mobster in that. <laughs> He's robbing a bank and juggling his split personality of a district attorney and a burping monkey. You know Tommy Lee Jones told Jim Carrey he hated him because he couldn't sanction his buffoonery? The blood drained from his face uh, wow. and hugged me and said, I hate you. I cannot sanction your buffoonery. See ya! <laughs> Makes sense to me. I'm just wondering how acid can turn one half of your face into plastic purple latex. <laughs> As you probably guess, he often flips a coin to decide who lives and who dies. Fortune smiles, another day of wine and roses. But, but you said you'd let me live! Too true! And so you shall! I mean, I'll kill you later, but I'm letting you live for a few minutes. I'm a district attorney, I can always find a loophole. Batman arrives on the scene to meet up with psychiatrist Dr. Chase Meridian, played by Nicole Kidman. Hot entrance. A dedicated professional, as you can see. Gordon is trying to figure out how to save the hostages inside, but Batman has more important issues to confront. Like convincing a stranger that bats aren't rodents. I could write a hell of a paper on a grown man who dresses like a flying rodent. Oh no, you didn't. Bats aren't rodents, Dr. Meridian. You are interesting. Your ability to wiki search intrigues me. By the way, do you have a first name, or do I just call you Bats? Oh, what, is there a bank robbery or something? Oh yeah, there totally is. We'll start this party with a bag! Well, we know Dr. Meridian sure did. <laughs> Batman breaks in and fights off a gang of Mexican wrestlers while also trying to get the cameraman a tripod. <laughs> Does that device turn people into Roger Rabbit? <laughs> oh, apparently it's spread to the music, too. <laughs> Well, the composer ran out of money, so he just started going. It's a trap! It's a trap! Composer. Two Face lifts the vault into the air, filling it with acid to rain down on the people of Gotham and their multicolored windows. Medieval Times is more subtle with their color use. He uses his grappling hook to break through the incredibly weak concrete, which also supports a giant metal safe because it's suddenly the strongest concrete in the world. I knew they shouldn't have used this stuff. Two-Face flies his helicopter towards the... statue of Gothamy. It was a gift from French Metropolis. But both Two-Face and Batman jump out in time, leading to... Can we just start a pointless Schumacher slow-mo count? Only if I can start a Val Kilmer mouth-hanging open count. But that clashes with my Christian Bale mouth-hanging open count. Oh, let's look at the menu. If you share the slow-mo count with a Jim Carrey making an excited he farted face count... Then you can share the Val Kilmer mouth-hanging open count with Christian Bale's mouth-hanging open count. And who gets the bad news? We, we all do. do. Harvey Two-Face is still at large and extremely dangerous. Wow. Batman the Animated Series did not age well. That's supposed to look realistic. It's not. I know it's not. Speaking of which, we're introduced to Jim Carrey as Edward Nigma, a name so ridiculous even the Animated Series refused to believe he didn't just make it up. What did you mean, a joke on his name? His name's Edward Nigma. I get it. Enigma. Edward. Edward Nigma. Look at us. Two of a kind! Huh? At first I thought Carrie's portrayal of Nigma was a little too over the top, but after internet culture and fanboys blew up... I'm Pickle Rick! Woman on the dog dog! You guys are the ones that ruined Sonic for everyone! Leave her alone! Get my socks! Get my socks! Bring it! Bring it! Yeah, it might be too subtle. Nigma is obsessed with Bruce Wayne and wants him to okay his device that beams TV signals directly into the human brain. I'm sorry, Ed, then the answer is no. Tampering with people's brain waves, mind manipulation. It just sounds like cable news. It just raises too many questions. 
Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now. Bruce sees the bat signal and uses the um, bat pipe to transport himself to the bat cave. Oh, that must have been a lot of fun for the builders to put in. Alfred threw his back out a lot after setting that up. Chair. Does he really see no problem arising with that setup? Boy, Bruce, this is a really comfortable chair. It turns out the call came from Dr. Meridian. Commissioner Gordon? He's at home. I sent the signal. No, oh, trust me, you're sending all the signals. And thus we partake in one-liner theater. Are you trying to get under my cape, Doctor? A girl can't live by psychosis alone. It's the car, right? Chicks love the car. Oh! Oh! I know the opening line for the next film! Oh, black rubber. Dry fireman, less to take off. This is sexual harassment and I don't have to take it. My life's an open book. You read? I'll bring the wine, you bring your scarred psyche. Or do I need skin-tight vinyl and a whip? lady, what's your PhD in bad pickup lines? Come to think of it, what was she shaking earlier? Commissioner Gordon bat blocks them, showing up in his pajamas. I saw the signal, what's going on? False alarm. Are you sure? I so wish there was an emergency just so I could see him fight crime in his pajamas. Oh, you saw my director's cut. Nigma, meanwhile, kidnaps his boss and uses his device on him. Yay, you made Spy Kids 3D. And because this film isn't subtle enough... <laughs> clearly, dignity has been returned to the Dark Knight. Fred! After stealing his brainwaves, Nygma kills his boss, and we're showing the most cinematic court show ever. ...was horribly scarred by Boss Maroney. Although Batman tried to save him, Dent's left brain damage transformed him into a violent criminal. Who blamed Batman? Well, there you go. One third of the Dark Knight movie condensed into two sentences. Shouldn't he want revenge on the crime boss? Also, is Batman testifying in court? Is he a valid witness if no one knows who he is? It just raises too many questions. No, no shit! shit! Bruce is given a riddle in his office after it's revealed that Nygma's boss seems to have jumped to his death. Yep, definitely suicide. Best commissioner ever. Meanwhile, we see Wayne Enterprises apparently hands out really shitty paychecks as Nygma's home slash someone else's closet is being used to send more threatening riddles. Bruce takes one of them to a... <clears throat> professional. Dr. Meridian, please. Eh, uh, that wish. You can figure out the rest. Bruce hears threatening sounds from her office, but it looks like she was just doing her usual in-office boxing before a session. Are you sure he's supposed to be the crazy looking one here? And of course he gets her in-depth expert advice. This letter writer is a total wacko. At this point I'd actually trust wacko more than you! He's obsessed with you. His only escape may be to purge the fixation. So not only is he a wacko, but you've jumped to the conclusion that he's a guy. I think we established he's not a good psychiatrist. The two of them hit it off, I guess. They more play I Spy of obvious symbolism in the room. You have a thing for bats? She's a Malaysian dream warden. She protects you from bad dreams. And he invites her to the Gotham Charity Circus. A Joel Schumacher film, you say? Schumacher looks at men the same way Michael Bay looks at women. And men, the more I think about it. It's here that we're introduced to the Flying Graysons. One of them soon to be Robin, the 25-year-old boy wonder. I'm totally 15, you guys. I'm like into Pokemon or whatever. But Two-Face interrupts the televised circus performance. You know those common circus performances you see all the time on TV. And tells the crowd that if Batman's identity isn't revealed, he'll blow everybody up. Batman, bruised, broken, bleeding in a word. Dead! <laughs> The Graysons try to stop the bomb, but Two-Face guns them down, leaving only Dick. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. The day is saved, but young Grayson is left without a family. To demonstrate Schumacher's understanding of this tremendous loss, we cut immediately to a horse humping a rock. Okay, I'm out of here. Excuse me? Look, I figure telling that cop I'd stay here for a while saved me a truckload of social service interviews and charity, so, uh... No offense, but no thanks. Well, you're legally an adult, so do whatever the hell you want. You're a fix on Two-Face, then I'm gonna kill him. 
Killing Two Face won't take the pain away. It'll make it worse. <laughs> I mean, I felt great when I killed the Joker, but it probably wouldn't fit you. Bruce says, forget your parents and fix my bike, which Dick immediately agrees to. But it looks like Batman is being called to an emergency that will never be addressed, so Alfred is left to tend to Bruce's dick. I know what I said. Is this a Robin? My brother's wire broke. I swung out and grabbed him. My father said I was his hero. I flew in like a Robin. Some hero I turned out to be. Ah, uh, but your father was right. The first time, anyway. Meanwhile, Two-Face ambushes Batman on his way to the crime we'll never see as, once again, we're introduced to the world's strongest frickin' grappling hook. Tune in next time, kids! Same batshit implausibility, same batshit movie! Meanwhile, Nygma is trying to figure out what to call his alternate identity, but his Geico caveman puppet apparently has an idea. Thank you. I shall be the green light bulb. Meanwhile, Two Face sulks in his split layer. Yeah, that's as complex as his character is gonna get, folks. Well, apparently the Riddler is waiting there too. Don't mind me. I'll just be waiting for the assistant director to cue me. I made your favorite a sterno and grain alcohol straight up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> or as Drew Barrymore calls it, a starter. We're of two minds about what to eat first. <laughs> The green light bulb! The Riddler comes out of literally hiding and says he can help him kill Batman if Two-Face lets him live. But Batman... <gasps> There's a challenge. Flash of blood and then what? Post-homicidal depression. <laughs> Did you enjoy my Porg impression? The combination of Max Hedrum and a green skittle tells Two-Face that if he gets his device on every television in town, he'll help him get Batman. Two-Face reluctantly agrees. Reluctant for him or us? Pick one. Okay. They rob every place they can to mass produce his invention. <laughs> ah, his superpower is to magically shrink diamonds mid-edit. Teamed with Two-Face, this new criminal's pattern of marking his crimes with puzzles has Gothamites calling him the Riddler. Wouldn't they be calling him the ripoff artist? I mean, obviously the Riddler type character exists in this world from all the toys Nygma had, so why don't people recognize it? It'd be like if a killer wore a Spider-Man costume and called himself the Red Lobster. I sure that would be a better name. How many spiders are red? I need a tuxedo, but I'm far too busy to go to a place with people to get one. Too busy talking to this wall that I'm convinced is an online audience. Well, that's why I contacted theblacktux.com so they could mail me one, wall. Why, thank you, mailman who isn't really there. Cardboard box? You said you were sending me a tux, you liars! Oh, there's a tuxedo in the box. Good. I mean, everyone wants to look good for that special event, but they don't want to fork out a ton of money for it either. Well, theblacktux.com is your answer with high quality rental suits and tuxedos delivered to your doorstep. It's such an easy way to rent suits and tuxes online. Most suits go for something like 1200 bucks, but at the Black Tux, they start at $95. They let you create your own look and choose from a ton of great stylists. Their expert customer care has your back every step of the way, and it's completely done online. You can even do a free home try-on so you can see the fit and feel the quality of your suit months before your big event. And after ordering your suit, they'll have it to you 14 days before the event even starts. It even comes with socks, free socks! And if anything is less than perfect, the Black Tux will send you a free replacement right away. When your event is over, you just drop your rental back in the mail and shipping is free both ways. And hey, you want to get 20 bucks off your purchase? Just visit theblacktux.com slash nostalgiacritic. That's right, just go to theblacktux.com slash nostalgiacritic and you'll get $20 right off your purchase. Now I'm ready for my incredibly big event. Some people still see snow as a special occasion. Visit theblacktux.com. Premium rental suits and tuxedos delivered. Nygma gets enough money to sell his device and even finally gives it a name. The box in every home in America and one day the world. It's a cone. 
Edward Nigma's 3D box has become. It's a cone! Critics have claimed the box turns Gothamite. Cone! There's hardly a home without the Nigma Tech box. The box! Cone! I don't know why you have such a problem saying you're watching Jim Carrey's box. Now I get it. Meanwhile, Alfred wants to make sure he can use the entrance to the Batcave while his dick is occupied. Yeah. Sheesh! You can hop on one foot and catch up to the door in time. Yeah, Batman's got some hardcore security there. Have everything turned on while a meek voice goes intruder alert. Uh, here we are, it's the Bats Cave! Intruder oh, alert. there goes the voice. I guess it means we gots to go. Yo, oh, but the Batmobile just rolled in with the music and everything! Can we take a spin in it? Didn't you hear the voice? It called us intruders! Think about that! Nah, you're right, that would be pretty rude. Now let's get out of here before it calls us ruffians. Oh wait, quick selfie, real quick. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just to know we've been here. Intruder okay, alert. Intruder alert. Meanwhile, Bruce and Chase get ready for their date. Bruce opens with his most romantic phrases. My parents were murdered in front of me when I was just a kid. You really know all the pickup lines. But he literally gets jealous of himself as Chase leaves her bad porn out. Maybe I'll leave you too long. Well, try not posing with a smile on the cover of Time, you egomaniac. Did you get my bad side? But Alfred lets him know that his dick has gone traveling as he cruises around town in the Batmobile. Wait a minute. That's not bad, man. What are you talking that, about? That's Bat Boy. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm like totally a little kid. I'm watching Ben 10 or whatever. That's not bad, man. Oh wait, that's the circus kid Bruce Wayne adopted. Oh, Bruce Wayne's totally Batman. You have to be a genius to figure that out. I'm gonna put it on Snapchat. It looks like a girl is in trouble at this laser tag arcade, but Good Hardy Dick is on the way to save her. He's dick feeded, but the gang language of a whistle signals the other members to attack. Uh, hello. Batman here. Trying to look threatening. Not for crying out loud. Batman! Batman saves him after getting his cape caught. No, really, that happens. Getting some harsh reactions from his dick. If you tell those two fish anywhere the circus, they still be alive! If Bruce Wayne could have given his life for your family, he would have. Will you tell Bruce Wayne I hate him? Oh, jeez, you dumbass. Bruce goes to wipe the sweat away. Lord knows it took a lot out of him to jump, and that's it. As he makes it clear that Grayson don't know dick. So you're willing to take a life. It will happen this way. You make the kill. Yeah. But your pain doesn't die with Harvey. It grows. Cool. So you run out into the night to find another face. Awesome. And another. Even better. And another. This is literally my dream, you know that, Bruce. I'm a part of this whether you like it or not. What are you gonna do? Replace me with Joseph Gordon-Levitt? <laughs> so everyone gathers to see the new version of Nigma's box? Cone! Let it go. As Nigma seems to be the toast of the town. How does it feel to be the city's newest <laughs> eligible bachelor? Gotham must know! Oh! Is everyone's acting channeling a constant orgasm? Oh! I think that's bad. Check out this guy who tries Nigma's latest invention. You're dashing and a genius! The hell is up with that guy? I think a rabid baboon would be less awkward. <laughs> Shall we dance? I was asking you. So while therapist and the world's greatest detective couldn't figure out this is the Riddler, Wayne is duped into a mind-reading machine which is interrupted by Two-Face. This gives time for him to break free and once again refuse to enter through a door. Are there any normal extras in this movie? They put on a stunt show and try doing their version of the Raiders of the Lost Ark gun scene. It doesn't work. Don't worry, we don't blame you, Stuntman. Not in any way resembling Val Kilmer. As Two-Face moves on to Phase 2. <laughs> By the way, I can't sanction your buffoonery. Ooh, look! We have two pointless slow-mos and two Kilmer's mouths hanging open. And yet I feel so... empty. But Two-Face blasts him under a mountain of sand. <laughs> Enjoy! It's course rough and gets everywhere! But his dick saves him, making Bruce surprisingly unhappy. What the hell did you think you were doing? I had an out from this movie! 
They bicker and argue, but Bruce has no time for that. He's got a horny honey he's secretly stalking. Even Chase calls being Batman a curse. Never been in love before, Alfred. Perhaps the lady is just what the doctor ordered. She seems lovely and wise. Hot entrance. My place. Midnight. What is it about the wrong kind of man? Oh, do I need skin tight vinyl and a whip? Honestly, I think she's a creepier fan than Nygma. Nevertheless, Batman visits her and she admits she's more in love with Bruce than him. I'm sorry. I... I'm wishing you were somebody else. I've met someone. I hope you can understand. It's not even his personality, it's just something about his jawline. Oh, come on! And this, of course, gives us the Batnerp. Oh, <laughs> no. oh, 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 oh. However, Enigma shows us the results of a Bruce Wayne mind reading. Riddle me this. What kind of a man has bats on the brain? Aquaman? While that's going on, Batman decides to give up his night job. From this day on, Batman is no more. Chase is coming over for dinner, I'm going to tell her. Everything. So just remember folks, it wasn't a super villain or dangerous stunt that ended Batman's career. It was a horny psychologist and his whiny dick. Actually, that makes a little too much sense. Bruce invites Chase over to tell her everything while kids go trick-or-treating at his house. Trick or treat! Release the hounds. As Bruce continues to have flashbacks, his dick flees in disgrace and the Riddler and Two-Face find a way to sneak in. Twig or tweet! And don't forget to move that tray away from the door. There you go. They blow up the Batcave, kidnap Chase Meridian, and Two-Face keeps flipping his coin until he gets the side he wants. Just like the comic! I can't sanction this buffoon, no way! Too much buffoonery! If you kill him, you won't learn nothing. <laughs> <laughs> As Bruce wakes up, he's told what happened, and the Riddler gets to continue his annoying Jim Carrey impression. Batman will come for me. Batman? Batman, you say? Coming for you? <laughs> I'd say this is over the top even for him. But seeing how the rest of Gotham acts, I'd say he fits right in. Hey, who the hell's doing that? Catwoman, who do you think? Meanwhile, Bruce and Alfred try to figure out the meaning of the riddles, realizing there's a number in each one, and perhaps they represent the alphabet. 18 is R, M, R, E, Mr. E, and another name for Mr. E, Enigma, Mr. E, Enigma, Edward Enigma. There's also a return address from Edward Enigma Industries, but your way worked too. And if for a split second you forgot Joel Schumacher directed this, But he's not the only one who wants to look ridiculous. R. What's that stand for? Ralph. I just always wanted to be called Ralph. Ralph. Batman is rather easily convinced to let him come along now as they go to stop the evildoers. Oh, I have no boat training! I'm gonna die in this thing! Thankfully, Batman also lets the police know they don't actually have to do their jobs. Well, I guess our work is done. Meanwhile, at Nickelodeon Studios, the Riddler and Two-Face try to foil our dynamic duo. Oh no, my dick! Hi. We've had a lot of fun with people named Dick today, but they're all good sports. So the next time you see your local Dick, why not go up to him and say, I know it's hard, Dick. Thank you. I got it. You know, between the Joker's gun and a green light, the bat plane is pathetically easy to take down, isn't it? Holy rusted metal, Batman! Huh? You're grown, it's all metal, it's full of holes, you know? Holy! Oh. <laughs> we 
gotcha. The movie wouldn't be so silly to put that kind of line in there. However, lines like this. Are you trying to get under my cape, doctor? And this. I'll get drive through And this. The car, right? Chicks love the car. Are totally fine. The two are separated, leaving Robin to fight Two-Face alone. That was for my mother! My father! My brother! My goldfish! My dog! My uncle you never met! I hope you have a small family. Batman reaches the Riddler, who looks like Elton John, Liberace, and Syndrome fused by Satan, as he reveals his evil plan. Soon my little box will be on countless TVs around the world, feeding me. Credit card numbers, bank codes, sexual fantasies, and little white lies. Wow, that's actually kind of relevant. Yeah, like legit clever commentary. I am not saying this is ahead of its time! Nope. I am not saying this is ahead of its time! He shows that he captured Chase and Robin. In fact, he weirdly looks less shocked that Robin is captured than Chase. Seriously, day one and you got caught. And the Riddler makes him choose which one dies. Which one will it be, Batman? Bruce's love? Or the Dark Knight's junior partner? I'll have the lasagna. But Batman seems to have a riddle for the Riddler. I see without seeing. To me, darkness is as clear as daylight. What am I? The Riders. You're as blind as a bat! Exactly. He puts on his computer specs because he needed help to hit the giant blender in the middle of the room, and the Riddler is turned into... Pizza dough? I have no idea. The Riddler ends up dropping them, but thankfully Batman's ego weighs more than them, so he's able to defy the laws of gravity to save them. In answer to what I choose, Nygma, I choose the same cop out answer that Spider-Man took! Go me! <sighs> Thanks. You're welcome. It was a mistake bringing you, and I'm never doing this again. <laughs> no more riddles, no more curtains one and two. Just plain curtains. <laughs> I like curtains. Aren't you forgetting something, Harvey? Your coin. You're always of two minds about everything. Except when it's not, which we've established is most of the time. Batman makes it clear that it's wrong for Robin to kill, but him, on the other hand, he can totally keep looking for other faces to kill. And this one is two for one. He kind of explains this to Enigma. Ooh, I should have gotten vaccinated. You see, I'm both Bruce Wayne and Batman. Not because I have to be. No. Because I choose to be. Did I mention I'm not going to be in the next Batman movie? He's sent to Arkham Asylum, where the doctor is concerned about what he knows. Edward Nigma has been screaming for hours that he knows the true identity of Batman. And why my name is in the opening credits, even though I only have one line. Dr. Burton tells me you know who Batman is. Ben Affleck! Okay, he's clearly nuts. Bruce says goodbye to Chase, so I guess he did choose Batman over Bruce Wayne. Kind of cheating. And our dynamic duds run triumphant-ish into the night. Ha! Holds up pretty well, doesn't it? Well, while we appreciate you standing there in silence the whole time. Yeah, I like to listen. We still can't say it's a good Batman movie. I mean, okay, it's not Batman and Robin, and it's meant to be lighter in tone, but it just seems confused on whether it wants to be a comedy like The Adam West Show, a drama like the Burton movies, and thus it turns out it doesn't succeed in either. Granted, it does have a few good ideas, and the visuals are still rather stunning in many respects, but it plays everything too safe, and that's not how Batman should be handled. Batman should be different, memorable, and inspired. This film is either annoyingly odd or boringly generic. If it didn't have the Batman name on it, it'd probably be forgotten quickly as a superhero flick. It's not the worst, but it's not that good either. It's a strange installment, but not strange enough to leave that big of an impact. Well, I respect your opinion. Come on, why don't we all sit down and have some tea together? I've already made some for Malcolm and Tamara. He really is a nice guy. You know, why not? Yeah, I mean, I know I don't always like your movies, Mocker, but you seem like a decent, down-to-earth guy. Well, I really appreciate that. Thank you. <gasps> the Red Lobster! This is an Over Lobster!
must know! Oh! Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and this week we are doing the Cancer Research Institute. Since 1953, they've led the field with support for immune therapy research and clinical trials. Together with their donor, patient, and scientist communities, they continue to fund revolutionary breakthroughs to cure all types of cancer. By harnessing the innate powers of the body's immune system, immune therapy treatments have the potential to achieve complete, long-lasting remissions and cures. If you look at their site or their YouTube page, you can see all the hard work that goes into this fight and all the patients they've helped or saved along the way. There's still so much more work that needs to be done and you can play a big part in making history simply by giving a little donation. Click on the link below and see how you can help make a huge difference.